Hello and welcome to this screencast about continuous integration using the Play Framework, GitHub, and CloudBees. Um, I've created a GitHub project called Play Example Continuous Integration, which goes into detail about the complete process kind of from scratch. So there's this one-time configuration of GitHub and CloudBees that you have to do, and then um, whenever you're doing a project, there's, there's kind of a process you have to go through for each individual project that you want to adapt. Um, and the documentation there assumes that you've never done this before. What I'm going to do in this screencast is show you kind of the quick way to do it if you've already set up a prior project under continuous integration. Um, and you can kind of skip some of these steps or, or go through them a little faster. So what I'm going to do is show you how to do that. The first thing you're going to do is similar to the steps in um, this is you're going to do click start to create a new play application. And in this case, um, what we want to do is name it the same as the application that we want to put under continuous integration, which in this case is this thing called play example WMS. So I'm going to call my CloudBees project play example WMS as well, and I'll create, uh, it's going to create the application. We'll pause here for a couple seconds. Okay, so uh, CloudBees has finished building this uh, new play application or sample play application. I'm going to close the dialog box, and what we're going to do now is we're going to go uh, and delete the repository, which is here because we're not going to use that repository. We're going to use the GitHub repository. So we don't need this one on CloudBees, which in any case doesn't even have the right code. We're also going to go ahead and go to the build section and um, delete this thing that um, has been created automatically for us because that's the kind of the default Jenkins job for uh, generic play applications and, and we're going to build our own but we already have one that's been customized for continuous integration so th this is where it gets um, gets better is we're going to create a new job called play example WMS and in this case we're going to copy it from an existing job that we've already set up for and have successfully working for continuous integration. So we'll do this OK here. Now we've got this new one, OK? And what we have to do next is find the, um, the SSH URL for the project that, that we're interested in. So we're going to copy this. And then we're going to go back and we're going to scroll down to here which shows the git URL for you know the, the job we copied from and we're going to place it with the one that we actually want the the repository for the job that we're actually setting up so now it's going to refer to uh, play example WMS and then we'll scroll down here and we don't want to build when a change is pushed to CloudBees Forge we just want to build when the change is pushed to GitHub so we'll do that we'll also check the build command in particular what are the targets and those are all the good targets. So in my case of continuous integration, I like to run check style, PMD, find bugs, and Jococo colon cover. Um, and I've integrated that into my, um, my SBT build system. There's instructions at the, um, in the example uh, project on how to do that. And then my previous working continuation progress also created these post build actions for publishing check style find bugs pmd junit and jacoco so this is really nice i don't have to reconfigure and re-add all these post build steps by virtue of the fact that i'm copying a previous job which is already set up this is all done for me so that's super nice last thing i have to do is change the application to be play example wms and I can save. Okay, and so now I've got this all set up correctly. So the next thing I would need to do is go over to my uh, my GitHub repository that holds my application, and I go to Settings, Service Hooks, Webhook URLs, 
and I make sure that I have that GitHub webhook there. Now normally you're going to have to actually add this one, but I already had it there, so I didn't bother to delete it just to re-add it. But basically it's going to be your account name uh, will be replaced right here, but everything else is just the same. It's just this kind of static you know, URL. Okay, so that's all good. So having done that, what I can now do is press test hook. And that's going to actually invoke this hook, which, if we're lucky, is going to result, actually not if we're lucky, but if we've set everything else up correctly, that's going to result in um, the uh, build of this system being kicked off automatically. And you can see that that's actually starting to happen in this lower left-hand corner with the build history. Um, so we'll wait a couple seconds. Hopefully this thing will get kicked off. Okay, so now it's um, it's not quite there yet. Let's try refresh. Okay, so here we have it. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to the console output, which is super useful um, to monitor the progress of a particular build. And this is probably going to take maybe 10 minutes to actually go through the entire build process. So I'm going to pause now and we'll come back when the, the build is actually completed. Okay, well it's a little while later and the build has finished and the first thing to note is it was successful. It's really good news. It's always um, kind of fun to look through the actual log to see what happened. Um, you can see up here it's checking things out from the Git repository. There's some, because uh, we're using the in-memory database, we don't have to set up that URL stuff, but uh, as part of the build command and the configuration to the, the um, Jenkins job, you can change these values if you need to. Here's the actual um, build command, and we're going to run check style PMD find bugs, testing, and uh, test coverage. So this is our tests. Here's the output from check style. Um, so you can see we've got a lot of check style errors that need to be fixed. And then we scroll um, past all this stuff. And then we didn't have any PMD errors. Um, we didn't have any fine bug errors either. This is the run of Jococo. So we're running our test cases again, but this time we're instrumenting them to see uh, what lines of code were actually accessed during the tests. And then there's some packaging that goes on in, in this area here. Um, and then our plugins for reporting then run and look for the checkstyle.xml file, the findbugs.xml file, the pmd.xml file, the Jococo stuff. And then finally, um, when that's all done down here, then we move into the deployment mode. And so now it's trying to deploy the application, and so it does that, and it can be accessed here. So we might as well just kind of click on this link, and there we have our running application. So that's kind of a nice part of using, um, of of using CloudBees is you actually have this developmental, uh, you know, server that you can use to see what what happened. Okay, so going back to here, let's return to um, the actual project. And you can now see that there actually are some reports that are available. So we could click on uh, the code coverage. And you can do some fun things, like you can go into the controllers package. And then you can go into whatever product. And you can actually see the lines of code that were executed during your test cases. Um, so that's, that's kind of a nice feature. Um, similarly, if you click on this kind of stuff, you can find out about the errors that were generated. Um, the last thing, uh, if we go back to project, okay, um, is to go here to this embeddable build status. This is where you can find a variety of links if you want to set up an icon in your GitHub project page or any other place you want to indicate what the current status of the build is. So you probably want to use this. Again, you want to go back to the um, uh, you know this project to go through because there's some stuff you have to configure in order to get that to actually work. You have to enable anonymous access and Jenkins and a couple of crazy things. Um, but anyway, it's it's all doable um, if you know what to do. 
All right, I think that's about it. Uh, enjoy setting up continuous integration in CloudBees. I think it's a real continu continuous integration is an extremely helpful software engineering technique um, to ensure quality and to make sure that your, uh, you know, your system is deployable and uh, you know useful at as m many of the developmental moments as possible.